At the Horse Guards in, in Petworth, there is a seven-course game menu being appreciated by food writers from the likes of the Sunday Times and lovefood.com. Once they've polished off the bullshot, game scotch, quail eggs, Vietnamese-style game broth, rabbit livers, wood sorrel and rabbit dumplings, it's going to be an early night. Not just for the benefit of good digestion, but because at first light they'll be up a high seat or walking gingerly through the woods experiencing deer stalking for the first time. Every journalist is allocated an experienced stalker. We're joining Lucas, who writes for the Sunday Times. He is being looked after by Jack Smallman, who runs South Downs Venison and Game. Yeah, it's really um, very exciting. It's also really nice just being, you know, being out here at this time in the morning, actually. Just, uh, you know, out among nature. Unfortunately, the weather is rubbish. Visibility is down to just 20 yards, and although we can hear a rutting buck, there's no chance of seeing him. Jack has honed his own selection of calls, which seem to work impersonating a new buck on the block and a youngster. With no chance or promise of a shot, we resort to Plan B. While he's still out here, if we can, we sneak down the side of the wood. Come back, come back. Try and come back with the wind still in our favour and try and get a visual on it. Um, hopefully we'll see some does and maybe prick it with him or we might get a shot, but we shall see. The fog gives us as much of an advantage as the deer and we actually get quite close to the group. Silhouettes pass in front of us and a new buck has joined the party by the sounds of it. Antlers clash in the distance. Incredibly, a young buck, an ideal cull animal, materialises out of the fog. Jack gets set up. He watches as opportunities come and go as the fog ebbs and flows. As the buck passes by us broadside, we prepare for the shot, but it never comes, and with good reason. Did you see that? Unbelievable. When he went down there, he was safe, but like ish. He wasn't brilliant, then he came out to here, where I'd have quite happily shot it. I could see it with my naked eye, went up through the scope, could not see it. It did disappear. It just vanished. Every time I looked through, I was like, right, I can just see a silhouette. I looked through the scope, just couldn't see a thing. And then when it came back here, I could see it as clear as day, but it's just too much skyline behind and villages and everyone else. So I was hoping it was going to come round. If it came across and back in to try and come back across the track, I'd have had it, but it's decided to carry on up the field. Oh. Next on the Game to Eat menu is a local pheasant shoot where we can grab a word with chef Lee Maycock and ask him why it's important for the Countryside Alliance to drag journalists around muddy fields and woodland. I think they've all seen enough and read enough and heard enough. I think they just want to do it first hand by actually getting them into high seats in the mornings um, to get them, you know, to that whole experience of, of being up in a high seat sort of six o'clock in the morning, watching the sun come up, seeing the deer on the horizon, it's fantastic. It's not the sort of thing you do every day so they can write from the heart when they actually put these stories together, they can actually do it as first-hand experience and they can speak with depth of knowledge. All the guests seem to be enjoying the experience. Most of them have some understanding of the importance of game and where it comes from. However, the name of the game today is to make the meat accessible to a wider audience, and they have the power to do that. For me, it was a real eye-opener. It's nice to see the animals being taken and know that they will be used. And for me, that's the most important thing to think of this as, although it is a bit of sport, it's also to think of it as food. The more we can do, uh, both in food media and both the retailers and producers uh, and, and other organisations, the more we can do to promote game and make it accessible. So sometimes people are going to get put off by trying to roast a whole pheasant bird and when they're used to a chicken. I think we need to look at what's happened with, say, things like duck, where it's broken down into component parts, so you've got sort of quick things to stir fry. People think of it, need to think a bit like that. They plan meals, not necessarily ingredients. And so we need to sort of give the consumer a broader range of choice and help and advice and recipes and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, the pheasant comes from Georgia. I've been banging on all day about the sort of, we can get some interesting spices in there. We can think about star anise and cinnamon and, you know, saffron and sort of, these are the things that come from the region where the birds are originally from. So, you know, people should think it's not just game chips. The drive is reasonably good with the dogs working well. Even the aptly named Peanut gets in on the act. The next stop is Jack's Chiller, where the guys have a chance to see the deer prepared. They are now on familiar territory and enjoy asking the butchers about cuts and preparation. 
it appears the writers have had an eventful day and Lucas has embraced everything that was on offer, even just being in the great British countryside. As of a nation that still, you know, however urban we've become, still has huge swathes of countryside that are managed by people who live in the country, whether they're farmers or people who run shoots. Um, you know, that's, that's a very important part of our, of our sort of national character, I suppose, and, and it's something that we really should be preserving and supporting and um, you know, looking after. So it's been, as much as anything, it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a lovely day out in the country, actually, with an early start. <laughs> This is the second time Jack has had the opportunity to take people from the foodie press out on field to fork adventure and he believes we are making real progress with promoting game. I think the public are now coming round to the idea that we've got in the UK an absolutely amazing product sat out there, got to be managed. Um, it's not just for the quality of the deer and keeping the herd numbers under control, it's as much for the we're looking after human and farming interests as well. So certainly down here in the South Downs, we're trying to produce that and touch wood, we're, um, we're doing OK. If you want to know more about the work of the Game to Eat campaign, visit www.countrysidealliance.org.uk.